Hi everybody, my name is Alex Javrankov and I'm the founder and CEO of Encelica Medicine. Welcome to our Pharma AI Day, Generative Biologics. Uh, we decided to uh, dedicate the entire day to this wonderful tool because uh, most of the in uh, industry doesn't know us for biologics drug design. And we are actually a pretty significant player in this field. So generative biologics allows you to uh, generate uh, peptides, antibodies, nanobodies with significant flexibility. So now this tool has been on the market for uh, over a year and we've got massive amounts of customer feedback uh, incorporated into the uh, models uh, and now made it available for the entire community. So this system now allows you for custom model training. So you, tell, you can utilize it uh, to improve uh, the models uh, in a very flexible way. Uh, we also allow for template-based uh, design and provide you with many more optimization workflows. Uh, please do enjoy generative biologics and provide us with more feedback. Every time you provide us with feedback, we will make this tool better. The Biology 42. Generative Biologics is an advanced AI-powered platform developed for the design and optimization of a wide range of biologics tailored to specific therapeutic targets. The Biology 42 Generative Biologics supports a variety of biologic modalities, including peptides, antibodies, and nanobodies. The platform provides several workflows for the user. For peptides, the platform is primarily focused on generation. We offer both de novo and template-based alpha helical peptide generation methods. These workflows allow the user to generate binders for their protein of choice. For antibodies and nanobodies, the platform is mainly focused on optimization and prediction workflows, enabling the user to select better biologics for further experiments and to perform affinity maturation and developability optimization more quickly based on their own data. The generation of initial antibody and nanobody binders is also available. At the core of the platform lies a robust collection of generative AI models, which are essential for biologics design. Biologics, due to their inherent complexity, require different methods for different tasks, and the platform is designed to meet these diverse needs. For instance, large language models, LLMs, are particularly useful for generating sequences, especially when working with antibodies, nanobodies, and optimization workflows. Graph-based AI models are highly effective for inverse folding tasks where the initial binder pose or scaffold is known. Diffusion models are also used to predict binding poses with high accuracy. Once sequences are generated, it is vital to assess and rank them to improve their chances of success in wet lab screening. To achieve this, generative biologics utilizes two main approaches, classical methods, where force fields and energy functions are used to estimate affinity and stability, and AI-based methods, where properties are predicted using pre-trained or fine-tuned machine learning models. One of the newest features of the platform allows users to retrain the AI models with their own data. This capability provides a significant advantage by enabling users to fine-tune the platform's performance and predictions, ensuring that it is better suited to the specific needs and nuances of their individual projects. These features distinguish generative biologics from other solutions on the market. Unlike many competitors who only provide AI models for biologics generation, we go a step further by also evaluating and ranking the structures we generate. Moreover, we give our users the option to further enhance the platform's performance by incorporating their own proprietary data into the system. The examples of the tasks generative biologics can solve are generating novel, hit-like peptides from scratch or based on existing templates. Let's now see how to train predictive AI models with user-provided data using the Generative Biologics app. To begin, from the project page, go to the Models tab and click the Training Job button. The Experiment Setup window will open. The workflow allows users to train models for both binary classification and regression tasks. The task type will be auto-selected based on your dataset and target column. To train the model, the platform requires a data set of antibody or nanobody sequences with previously measured properties. The data set should contain at least 150 entries. If you click on the How to Prepare CSV button, you will see the requirements for the data set to be uploaded to the platform. Essentially, for the affinity prediction task, the user should upload a CSV file containing antibodies or nanobodies, along with their corresponding experimental affinity values. 
The data should come from a single experiment, with antibodies targeting one antigen. Ensure that if any value in a column is filled, all other values in that column are also not empty. This version does not support multi-chain antigens, so merge chains into a single sequence if necessary. The models require full sequences of nanobodies, or the variable domains of antibodies, VH and VL fragments. Sequences will be checked for the presence of CDR regions, and datasets without them are unsuitable for training. For antibodies, the CSV should include three mandatory columns, light chain sequence, heavy chain sequence, and the target column. The antigen column is optional. For nanobodies, the VAH sequence and target column are mandatory, and the antigen column is optional. To upload your dataset, click on the Select or Upload Dataset window and choose Add New Dataset. A new window will open where you can select the file from your local computer to upload. Then you need to select the biologic type. In this case, it is antibodies. Afterward, you'll need to map the column names from the CSV file to the default names. Once the columns are mapped, click the Upload button. After the dataset is uploaded, you can explore it on the platform. As you can see in this window, our dataset contains 150 antibody sequences against one antigen with different properties, including the experimental affinity value for each entity. We will use this column as the target value for model training. When we return to the model training page, we need to specify the target column name affinity. In our case, this is a regression task, which is auto-selected. Finally, we can begin training by clicking the Run button. When the training is complete, you can proceed to the Results page, which provides a comprehensive overview of the trained model's performance. For regression models, the page will display various performance metrics, including Pearson and Spearman correlation values, R-squared, Mean Squared Error, MSE, Mean Absolute Error, MAE, and Mean Absolute Percentage Error, MAPE. These metrics will help you assess how well the model fits the data and its overall predictive accuracy. For classification tasks, the report will include weighted accuracy, precision, recall, F1 score, and ROC AUC values. These metrics give insight into the model's ability to correctly classify data points, its balance between precision and recall, and its overall performance across different classes. Based on these metrics, you can determine whether the model's performance is sufficient for your future experiments or if further tuning is necessary. If you find the model's performance satisfactory and believe it will meet your experiment's needs, you can deploy it, making it available for use in subsequent experiments and analyses. To deploy the model first, create both a full name and a short name for it, which will help you easily identify the model in future interactions. Optionally, you can also prepare a tooltip, providing additional information about the model's characteristics or usage guidelines. This can be helpful for collaborators or users who may work with the model later on. Once you've prepared everything, simply press the Deploy button to save and activate the model. After deployment, the model becomes accessible and can be utilized for various tasks such as optimization and screening. That's it! The trained model is now ready for use in further experiments. Let me now demonstrate how to perform antibody affinity optimization using the Generative Biologics platform based on trained models. To begin, you should create a new experiment and select the antibody optimization workflow. Once the experiment is created, the setup page will open. The input data for this workflow is a dataset containing the antibody sequences you would like to optimize. For example, the user can provide the same dataset used in the model training workflow, or they can start with a new sequence. The requirements are the same. The antibody dataset must contain both heavy and light chain sequences, while the nanobody dataset must contain only VHH sequences. The antigen sequence is optional for both biologic types. For this demonstration, we are utilizing the data that was previously used in the model training experiment. Once the dataset is selected, it undergoes a validation procedure to ensure the provided sequences are valid antibodies. If validation passes successfully, the user can select a model from the list of deployed models. If a regression model is selected, a new tab appears, where the user can adjust the target value for optimization. By default, this value represents the top-ranked antibody score from the model training dataset. 
and the goal is to obtain better antibodies with better affinity values. Once the data set and model are selected, the user can specify the experiment duration and click the Run button to start the optimization. When the experiment is finished, the user receives the optimized antibodies presented in a comprehensive table. At this stage, the workflow has specifically optimized the CDRH3 sequence, which plays a crucial role in antigen binding. As a result, the other regions of the antibody, including the framework regions and other variable domains, remain unchanged and intact. Alongside these sequences, you will also see the corresponding predictions generated by the selected model, providing insights into the anticipated binding affinity and performance of each variant. Clicking on the gear icon allows you to expand the column list and view the other antibody regions. And as previously, all the results can be downloaded for further analysis. This is how you can generate antibodies using the Generative Biologics app. To begin, navigate to the project setup page where you should create a new experiment and select the antibody generation mode. Once the experiment is created, the setup page will open. The workflow requires you to upload the target antigen structure in PDB format. Instructions on how to prepare the PDB file can be found in the How to Prepare PDB File window, which provides detailed guidance on formatting and potential issues with PDB files. To upload the target structure, simply click the Upload PDB File button and select the file from your local computer. Once the protein is uploaded, you will be able to view its 3D structure in the visualizer on the right side of the window. This will allow you to inspect the protein before proceeding. To move forward with the antibody generation, you should select the epitope you'd like to target with the generated antibodies. To do this, use the table on the left, which contains the protein residues. When you click on a residue in the table, it will turn green in the visualizer and its representation will change to sticks. At least one residue must be selected to proceed with the generation. For this experiment, let's select residues 66, 67, 68, 70, 74, 150 and 153 to represent our epitope, which we have identified based on previous analysis. As shown in the selection and visualization, all selected epitope residues will be highlighted for clarity. This information will then be passed to the generative model, which will attempt to design antibodies targeting the desired residues. Once the selection is complete and the epitope is confirmed in the visualizer, you should specify the experiment duration. For this demonstration, let's select two hours. When everything is set up and you're satisfied with the configuration, you can launch the experiment by clicking the Run button. After several hours, you will receive the results, which are presented in a table format. Each row contains the generated antibodies along with their parameters. The default parameters include the CDRH, three sequences and their lengths, epitope occupancy and reward values. Epitope occupancy refers to the fraction of selected amino acids interacting with the generated antibody. The value can range from 0 to 1, where 1 represents full epitope coverage, and 0 means no epitope residues interact with the antibody. Reward function is a combination of antibody stability and docking scores. The higher the reward value, the more promising the binder. If we click on the gear icon and extend the list of columns, we will see the full VH and VL sequences, along with other CDR regions of the antibodies. Clicking on any row in the table opens the molecule card, which provides detailed information about the selected antibody and its interactions with the antigen. The Visualizer tool allows you to manipulate the antibody-antigen complex, providing a better and more intuitive view for investigating the complex structure. By default, the epitope residues and CDR residues are represented as sticks and have different colors, allowing the user to explore the binding mode of the antibody. The Visualizer settings also allow you to label epitope residues to provide even more information about the interaction. Extending the number of displayed attributes allows the user to view the full sequences of the generated antibodies and easily copy them for further analysis. If we return to the table view and press the Export Results button, we will be able to download CSV and PDB files with the results for further in-depth analysis, as was done for other workflows. 